All right. Uh, so uh, I had last left off where we were done scraping. We got all this data. Now we need to organize that data, right? Uh, and uh, okay, let's do it. So we're going to use uh, pandas for that. So uh, I will be saying we want to really keep everything up the top. So we're going to say go back up here, import pandas as pd, right? That's just the standard. It just makes it smaller, right? And we're going to be using something called a data frame. A data frame is well, it's really just think of this, uh, and it will even give you this header and whatnot. But we have to create that header. For now, so let's just say uh, pd dot data frame, right? And since we actually have a two dimensional list, um, you can use an interchange two dimensional array or list, but technically array is different. Um, I'm not going to go any further than that. Um, and uh, now you can have this thing uh, right here and. We'll just say df equals that. This is just data frame, and that's standard as well. So you see that this data frame, uh, notice we don't have anything that says like what the actual terms are. Like we don't have this header portion, <clears throat> which makes it, gonna, it means it's going to be a little bit difficult for us to like manipulate the columns like we want. And we're going to need to do that for our machine learning model. So what we're going to say is table headers. And we're just going to say, you know, I'm actually going to just copy and paste. I already have everything. And I would really, you want to keep this in the same uh, um, uh, order as you have these elements like row, append, age, sex, uh, chest pain. You want to keep that in the same because what this is going to do is depending on how you, uh, whoever got entered in first, this is what you're labeling it. You're labeling this portion of it. So we want to make sure that chest pain is labeled as chest pain. And how we're going to do that is we're just going to say columns equal table headers I probably should say table header but whatever <clears throat> so what does this allow us to do well this allows us to actually access stuff like saying DF target uh, now because it's a, it's a dictionary uh, and a data frame all in one all in one uh, so we can get the values from here well the cool thing is we're gonna need to get the this this data because the target is the classification. So we're saying, do they have heart disease or not? That's the target. So if they have a one, they have it. If they have a zero, they don't have it, which is right here. Uh, the pres absence or presence. Okay, cool. Now let's go and say we want our y value, our y is to equal that. And then we want to have, uh, we want to drop that actually. We don't want that part of our training data. So we're gonna say df.drop and we're gonna say, what What are all the, um, we're, we're having a list of columns to drop. Reason being, because you can drop more than one thing at a time. We're gonna say df.drop that, and then we're gonna say the rest of the values is our x. So we're gonna say df. Dot, oh, not drop, <laughs> x equals df, that's all. Cool, so that's actually all we really need to do to set up our x and y, because we have such clean data now, okay. What's the next step? So now that we have our x value and our y value, we're, let's just well, let's just train something. So I'm gonna go back up here, and I'm going to uh, import scikit-learn or it's sklearn here. Why is it not saying it? Oh no, I want to say from sklearn. It's not doing something I want. Yeah, in, from sklearn imports. Uh, no, neighbors from SK learn uh, neighbors import K neighbors I'm having to actually cheat right now because my auto uh, completes not working and uh, I really don't remember all that stuff so cool it's just saying that I've imported from the neighbors uh, the K nearest neighbor classifier, not a regression. There is a difference between those, like I was saying uh, up here. Classification means we're trying to predict if something is or isn't, while the regression is protecting and predicting uh, an average of something. Or, well, in this case, it's going to be an average. Let's just train it. Let's just say K and N. Um, 
think we can just, I think we just, uh, in maybe just, why is my, it's not filling up the uh, autocomplete. <coughs> in neighbors. In, yeah. Oh, man. In I before E. <laughs> Except not in this case or practically any other case. In neighbors it equals three. So we're saying we want three of those values, which is exactly what this is three values, three votes. And then we're going to say that that is the classifier. Is that? And then we'll just say uh, classifier oh. dot fit uh, x to the y values. Okay. Now, if I run this, right, you actually you're actually going to train something. You're going to train this classifier. All right. So. Um, had an error like it says key error target not found in axis uh, what this is actually saying is it's saying that it couldn't find the target value right here we, we wanted to find on this axis. this axis is one this is zero and it defaults to zero so we're going to say axis equals one now let's try this again all right so uh, it got done finally uh, when I was doing this and uh, you notice that nothing happened classifier was just train we don't know anything about this uh, sucker we want to be able to say uh, how well our model's been doing so there's it's called validating the model and um, I can skip a lot of this since I already went through this whole scraping process oh man uh, storing data organizing and machine learning and m we did that so uh, so the previous slide we showed, I just showed this class right up it. Well, uh, if we give it do, uh, new data, would it tell us something useful? Well, we really don't know anything about our model right now. We have to validate it. And the, way, the best way to do that is through cross-validation. So cross, well, can't say that's the best way uh, when it comes to machine learning, but it's the best way when it comes to these smaller models like a K &M or or and when you don't have a ton of data now. Uh, let's do this. So let's say I think it's from maybe it was cross cross validated. I'm really not liking that my auto um, my spelling my helpers aren't helping. Uh, so we'll do cross validate, and then we'll just say uh, cross validate, and we'll put in the classifier I'm just gonna have to move the other thing up right here because we want this thing to go up here <clears throat> and then we're gonna say uh, uh, X and Y or my bad X and Y and how many times do we want the cross validation to occur we want it to occur let's just say three times the standard is actually 10 but just because my for some reason my computer's taking it's being very slow I want it to be on three uh, and after that uh, it's gonna give us some results and I want to present print the uh, results uh, from the test test score uh, so let me let me go over cross validation really quick cross uh, validation Go over some images. Let's see what they got here. That works. This works. Oh, that looks terrible. No, no, it is fine. Okay, so let's say we have our data set, right? This would be, let's say this is our data set. This is a full thing. Let's just say this is just turn this thing, this whole thing sideways, right? Oh. And so we're saying, okay, cool. Uh, we want the first portion of this like the top few rows to be our test set and then we'll only and then we'll train on these and then test against that and then we'll do the next one uh, we'll train on this and test against uh, we'll train on the rest of these and then test on that and this is a cross validation of five now we are using one of three or my three right here 
and we'll see what those test scores are. All right, this is gonna take a long time, so I'll probably just have to snip this back together. All right, so it just got back to me, and it said that uh, our uh, training actually isn't uh, doing too hot right here uh, because it's a uh, 60. Uh, this is actually the accuracy. So uh, our cross validation on the first iteration, it got a 60 uh, percent, a 57 percent, and 64 percent. Now I want to let you in on a secret. Uh, accuracy is almost a useless metric for uh, machine learning, uh, but for now that's what we're going to do because it's the easiest to understand. But it's it's just keep in mind that in reality you don't care about the accuracy, you care about precision and recall, which are two other things. <clears throat> so uh, now we're here, we got the results. Okay, well, it's not the best, but we're gonna continue on. We're not gonna try and improve it. Uh, that's something for a later time if you wanna explore. Okay, so uh, we know that this is just gonna do that. So we're just gonna continue and we're gonna make our classifier and uh, uh, we're going to train it, right? We're just going to say x, uh, y. And now uh, we are going to want to save this sucker because if you train a model and you can only use it right after training, that's useless. So we're going to serialize it by turning it into a binary file. So let's do this from, oh no, yeah, import pickle, right? Now, uh, this classifier is it, and that's what we want. So we're going to say with open, and I want to say tan um, heart disease dot pickle file because that's pretty much the standard. It can be any extension. Extensions are only they only tell you what program should open it. So you can name an extension with any extension that you want. Uh, so we're going to say write binary as file. A lot of people don't like using file because it's an actual uh, type, I think. Um, I'm going to use file. And now I'm going to say pickle.dump. I want to dump this classifier, and then I also want to put it to the file where it says it has write. OK, so this, this actually uh, is saving the uh, model. Cool beans. Uh, now we're going to need to load this eventually, but uh, this should be everything we need. Uh, so I'm going to run it. It's going to scrape. It's going to uh, get that data. It's going to train our model and then save it. And then uh, we'll go on to the next step right after that. All right. All right. Cool. So um, it just it got done. And you can see cane and heart disease dot pickle was created. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's make a new file, right? Uh, and let's, this is going to be our flask app. All right. Or actually, you know what? I'll, I'm going to say heart disease service dot pod. And just to show you that this uh, thing is working, I'm going to import uh, pickle. And um, I'm going to uh, load the file. So I'm just going to say uh, load model. And I'm going to say with open uh, KNN. Heart uh, disease. PKL. Uh, read binary. Oh, that's a V. I want it to read the binary. I'm going to say as file. Then I'm going to say I want the classifier to be pickle dot read or geez, pickle dot load. Why did I say read? <laughs> uh, file. And then I'm going to have it predict on something classifier a dot predict uh, something but I'm going to also use a PD this is oh wait uh, I want to use pandas import pandas as PD so I actually have some uh, data that I left out like the top row of um, the That's the CSV file, so I can show you, show everybody this. <clears throat> so, 
So these are all the values, right? So this is our uh, data point, data that we're going to predict on, right? So this would be the age, this would be uh, CP, I've already forgotten things. Uh, so that would be the sex, this would be the CP, this would be the uh, blood pressure, I believe. Yeah. And then something else, something else. And this continues on, right? So uh, we can just do what we did last time, right? We can just make this a um, two-dimensional array, two-dimensional list. And then we'll just uh, create this as df equals pd dot uh, data frame. And we'll just say data. And um, honestly, that, I think that should be it, really. Uh, it screamed at me at one time before, so maybe not. But we'll just we'll still say data. And we'll just say prediction. Is that? And then we'll print out the prediction and see what happens. Oh, no, not that. Not that one. I want the Python. Uh, heart disease service .py. I want to let it run that okay query data dimension must match training data dimension so what this is saying is it's saying that uh, there is an extra dimension here that is not present in that what this class was trained on this is why it's really important to keep our data all symmetrical so let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 okay so this is target value it doesn't need to be here cool it, it's wrong but it's cool uh, so let's go on and let's make our flask app so I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna say uh, pip install flask all right all right well my flask is already installed so done with that so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say import oh no from flask import flask which is the actual app and then we're going to say also I want to import request because that's going to hold the ob the data that we get from the user all right so le we we're going to want to load our models um, which we already did we don't need this anymore we don't need that we actually don't need any of this I'm going to say def um, Canaan, uh, Canaan, heart uh, disease, and we'll just say return hello world, right? And I'm gonna say at uh, app. No, I want to have the app equal um, flask, and I want it to be the name. Of this of this file, so name just means this file, and Flask is going to be uh, creating a Flask app with this name. Right now, we're going to use a decorator and say app dot route. Please, app dot route. Yes, and I'm going to say I want k and n. Oops. Slash KNN because we want it, it's going to be part of the URL. Because uh, so when we're doing a route, we're actually talking about like this, like this Kaggle.com, then there's Rotnet, and then there's this, and these are routes. That's all that's meaning the URL routes. KNN uh, dash heart dash disease, and uh, we are wanting to get something from the user, so we're going to say equal. We want a post method, right? Now, oh, oh, methods equal, my bad. Okay, so just to test that this is actually even gonna work eventually, uh, we want to start running this uh, as soon as we can. So let's say if main is equal to uh, main, I want to run the app. So app.run and I want it to run on port 9000. All right, we'll just say a new file, and we're gonna test our service, service.py. And 
uh, for this, we're going to actually use uh, requests. So just say pip install requests. All right, mine's already installed. And so request is a request is a package that just allows you to send a whole bunch of requests. So we're going to say import requests cool beans. Sorry. And then we'll just say uh, leave requests uh, dot post and I want to go to oh yeah let's just start this up real fast so I'm gonna say Python which we're now here on this heart disease I'm gonna say Python heart disease service and, and it works okay so this is the URL we're at HTTP 127.0.0.1 we just copy that, right? And we're gonna say request.post and we want it to go to where? We want it to go there, but that's just going to whatever this is. Like if I open this up, not found, right? I don't want that. I want to go straight here. So we're going to put that in, right? And now I'm gonna say, Print uh, response equals that. I'm going to say response dot text. All right. Okay. So this is running. Our server is running. It's up. Our app is going. It's list. Uh, it, it's wanting a request, uh, and we're going to give it one. Um, I like to just continue using this. Uh, so now I'm going to say Python test service pi. And we got a hello world. Cool, right? That's really cool. So we launched from this, and it talked to this, and it got this hello world. Well, what else can we make it return? And uh, that's where we're going to use this model to uh, get it. But we need to actually add some values, right? So back to what I was saying. Uh, this right here is the data that uh, we are wanting to uh, push and get something back from. And this is actually the same exact data that I'd use right here to get the uh, prediction. Now, uh, if you don't know what a dictionary is, uh, I'm not going to walk through that, so I'm sorry. But I will just show you that it's kind of like a, it's a JSON object basically in in Python it's different but if you're familiar with JavaScript it's JSON uh, so we have the age 63 sex is once and chest pain is three etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. well we can actually pass this into our post request and we'll just say that JSON equals data right pretty cool so now in here we can say we're getting a request and we'll just say uh, uh, data equals request dot get JSON and uh, I'm going to just say this anyway force equals oh my gosh equals true what does this saying is if it doesn't have the advocate if it doesn't have the header uh, set it'll still try and get the uh, get JSON or the JSON file now we want this DF to equal PD dot data frame uh, and we're gonna just say data and right so there's only one thing right look at this there's only one of these and it's no longer we're not using a double or we're not using a uh, double uh, two-dimensional array or two-dimensional list anymore we're using a dictionary <coughs> so what this is saying is we actually have to pass oh and it's all scalar values by the way uh, so if you see this right here since we're not doing this it's oh man it's gonna tell us that we have to we have to have everything as a, a list well we're not gonna do that so we need to tell it exactly what index we're, or how long it's gonna be uh, I don't know why it's just kind of weird or what index we're just saying we want the first thing it, it, it puts in the data frame and um, now we're going to get the prediction 
and then we're gonna say classifier dot predict uh, from this data frame which is just X can even I, I, you can even say that's X and then we'll just say um, it's gonna be an array by the way it's gonna be a numpy array but we're gonna just say if prediction the first thing because it's only one item but it's in an array we're just gonna get the value of it if the prediction is equal to zero <coughs> then we're gonna return and said that uh, um, uh, no Heart, uh, no presence of heart disease uh, detected. All right? And it's gonna make somebody feel really good, but this is not really good if they do have it, and they did it wrong. Uh, which there are some severe uh, uh, consequences for having a, a model that performs poorly, like this one. This one actually performs poorly. Um, and this is where we're trying to detect heart disease. This is not a good algorithm. This is not a good model, but we're going to continue. Um, uh, presence of heart disease detected. <clears throat> so this person, what we're saying is if the if the value is zero, then there's no we didn't detect any heart disease. But if it isn't zero then we definitely detected some heart disease all right so we're gonna want to rerun this oh man Houdini. and then we're gonna say Python uh, test service dot pi which is this right now we're passing this data and let's see what happens oh yeah response uh, was no presence of heart disease detected. Um, let's see if we make this 15. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Doesn't that changes anything? Ah, so, oh man. So just by changing that, we got a different answer. So no presence and then presence. So that's it. So that's how you can go from, I'm just gonna go right here, all the way down and we tested it. And now congratulations, we're done. So that is actually how you, um, Go get your data, organize it, train your model, move your model, uh, serialize your model, then uh, take your model and run it on some service like Flask, which in this case would be a microservice, or you could use Django. I'm really happy that y'all could follow along, and um, if there's any feedback I can get, let me know. All right.